When I first started, there really wasn't much of a women's biking community. We wore men's jerseys, we rode men's bikes. That's changed a lot now, and I'm sure part of it has been just my introduction of a bicycle for women. I can remember when I, I had one of the first prototypes of the Precision, which was our hand-built bicycle that we made, and I took it to a local dealer, the bike retail for $600, which, believe me, was an incredible price for a hand-built bike with the components it had on it. And I took it into the dealer and I said, here's the whole story, women's bike, what do you think? He looked at me and he said, no woman will ever spend $600 on a bike. And I thought, oh, I'm gonna make you eat your words. <laughs> I grew up in Montgomery, Alabama. I have no brothers or sisters. Uh, my mother actually died when I was 12, so pretty young. I was raised by my father and my grandfather, for the most part. I had polio when I was about two years old, and fortunately, I was raised in a family that really didn't worry about stuff like that, and surrounded by a lot of friends who were also two years old who didn't realize that I was any different than anybody else. So. I grew up uh, not really thinking of myself as being any different. I mean, I did the same stuff other kids did, climb trees, rode bikes, <laughs> uh, was mischievous and all that kind of stuff. I started building frames in my basement. I just kind of became curious about the bicycle frame itself and uh, got an oxyacetylene torch, had a friend come over and teach me how to use it. I bought some books. And my first bike was a design of my Schwinn Super Latour 12.2, which was the bike I was riding at the time. You know, I, I copied it exactly, and then I started wondering why they had done certain things that they had done to the geometry. Because really, they were trying to make a very small bike, but they cut a ton of corners to do it. I looked at that and went, wow, this is incredible. So. I took the plunge and started doing it the right way, which was building really small bikes with a smaller front wheel than rear wheel. Not my idea, by the way. It's been around since the late 1800s. So I started building like that. And then I found out that I was getting a lot of people from the local bike club and friends who were coming over saying, can you build me a bike? And a lot of them were women who wanted a bike because they felt very uncomfortable on their present bikes neck and shoulder pain and low back pain and all this kind of stuff. So from that point on, I thought, wow, let's look at the anatomy of women a little bit, see what's going on. Are they really that different from men? And it turned out that they really were. Because when you start getting into the anatomical differences between men and women, there are some, some really kind of serious ones. The center of mass of women's muscles is in a different place on their body than it is for men. And she has muscles that are smaller than his on average. You have to compensate for that in the design of the bicycle. You can compromise around it all day long, but I really don't believe that's the right way to do it. And then when it finally got to be bigger, the company actually moved into a building that was an infirmary for a shop that built railroad cars in Rochester. I mean, it was this just chunked out building that had virtually no heat. We just went in with whitewash and whitewashed the whole thing because it was filthy. And the best way to keep warm in winter was just to light up the torch and start building bikes. <laughs> Let that heat radiate out and warm you up. It is still a man's world that has not changed. I am much more successful selling these bikes, working one-on-one -on -one with my customers. Trying to explain it to the industry at large is still a really big issue. To me, some of that resistance is frankly more on a don't want to take the time to understand the science kind of level. And I find that very disappointing because we're a society that keeps going out and saying, we want the science, we want to make decisions based on the science. I don't know, know that I consider myself part of the feminist movement. I, I hope I am part of a movement that encourages women to think for themselves and to come at problems from an intellectual standpoint and not from an emotional standpoint. Uh, I hope that somebody looks at me and appreciates the fact that I am stubborn and I stick to my guns. One summer I worked for PPG Industries in Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh Plate Glass is what it used to stand for. 
I, I was just a rogue. I was such a pain in the butt. They couldn't wait to get rid of me and I couldn't wait to get out of there. And this one manager, I think he thought he was insulting me, but it was one of the nicest compliments I've ever gotten in my life. He looked at me and he said, you are an absolute maverick. And I was like, yes, thank you. <laughs>